Bob's Magic Emporium. Time for the next all new Magician 101, the show for all magicians. We got a lot of really great questions this week. Before I get to them though, I want to call your attention to this item right here on the Magic Shop. This is my latest trick I just got, and it's Tenyo's Triceptor trick. I got it off eBay. It's a discontinued, hard to find item, but this is a really fun trick. I'm not going to go into the full uh, uh, the review or performance of it today because you're going to see it this coming Monday for Magical Monday. So be on the lookout for that. All right, so let's get to the questions. We have a lot of them. Remember to post your questions down below for next week. I'll give them an answer. First question comes from Mr. Tadpole221. Thank you again, and here we go again. What are the best free tricks to learn and where to learn them outside of Free Trick Friday? Thanks again, and keep up the good work. All right, so the best place to learn free magic is right here on YouTube. People post uh, their own original creations, and as well as uh, just stuff you can learn, such as Miss Mag 822 does really good card trick tutorials on his channel. Uh, check out him, and also Scam School uh, with Brian Brushwood is another really good place to learn some free magic. All right, the Magician PR says, thanks for the intro, and I have a few questions. Do you have Ransom? If so, make a review of it. All right, so I don't actually have Ransom, but Ransom is a really cool trick. I don't perform a lot of money tricks myself. Um, I do, as you know, one coin trick, which is Barry Taylor's ultimate penny routine. And then I also do the Tenyo Trisector, too. Uh, I just got that, but I think I'm definitely going to add that to my show. Uh, that's another one with a dollar bill, a borrowed dollar bill. But I don't really do too much uh, coin, car, uh, 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 money magic, so I wouldn't do that. But it's a really good trick from what people say on like YouTube and the reviews on YouTube and in the reviews on Magic Geek site. I recommend it because I think it's going to be a really cool way if you do a lot of money magic to, to switch out a bill. It's a really awesome bill switch. All right, he also wants to know, what do you think about Gypsy Thread? All right, Gypsy Thread, I love this trick. I don't have it, but when I see magicians do it, it's a lot of fun. Gypsy Thread is you take a spool of thread, you pull off some, some thread off of it, break it off, and then you just start breaking uh, this thread off into little itty-bitty baby pieces. And then you roll it up in your fingers. And and then you and start to pull it, and the thread is back into one long strand. Really fun. I love the trick. Um, I, I would never use it because again, I you know it just doesn't fit my style of performing. But if it fits your style and you do a lot of thread work or you do something with thread in it, I recommend it because I think it's a really fun trick. And he also wants to know why do you make a sh why do you make a show for Tuesdays? I think he I think he meant to say why don't you make a show for Tuesday? Something with making only reviews of tricks. That's a really good idea. Uh, I do do a show on Thursday called Trick Questions, where uh, kind of I kind of answer your questions and kind of review magic. Um, Tuesday is my busy day. I don't get home. I leave at eight o'clock in the morning. I don't get home till eight o'clock at night on Tuesdays. So that is kind of my busy day, so I can't really film. But I was thinking about doing some kind of show for Tuesday, but I'm still kind of thinking. I just premiered Trick Questions a couple weeks ago. So I'm, if I do do one for Tuesdays, I'm not going to do it soon. I'm going to wait a couple months before I do it. And also, I'll be going to the beach a couple times, too, this summer. And I don't want to have too many shows where I have to film at the beach because in Ocean City, Maryland, the cell phone service stinks, and the internet service there stinks. No matter where you go, uh, there's like not very good Wi-Fi service there. So it's going to be hard for me to film the shows. By the way, this show and trick questions when I'm at the beach for a whole week in July will still be on. I'll just have to film it on my phone and have a while for it to upload. But I will be still doing these two shows during when I'm at the beach. You'll just see me at the beach instead of here at Bob's Magic Emporium. So, yeah. All right, and Future Magic 101 says, by the way, thank you guys so much for uh, telling me what all the really cool smiley faces you guys use. It's emojis, so thank you for that. Uh, thank you. And, he's, and Future, he was, Future Magic 101 was one of the people who told me that. He also says, and if someone asks you to perform a trick again where you have to force a card or take a really long time or take a really long setup, what do you do? Thanks, Bob. All right, so if you do a trick, let's say you do a trick like... Um, Chris Ballinger's Redemption, let's say. And uh, you do a trick, and it's ready to go, and you do it, everyone likes it, and they ask you to do it again. Normally what I'll do is I'll have another trick that I can do that doesn't require any setup. 
that is impromptu, like Chris Ballinger's four style card, where all, it, where all they have to do is pick a card and you're ready to go. Or an ambitious card routine. Or if you do money magic, like we were just talking about, then uh, have a money trick in your back pocket and you know do like Chris Ballinger's Ransom or something like that. Do something where you don't have to take a long setup to do. Um, but if you're in that situation where you have to do a long setup, just talk to the people. Uh, just talk to them and, you know, say, oh, you know, did you like the last trick? And just say, have you ever done a magic trick? Talk to them a little bit. Um, but normally I'll have a trick ready to go that I know I can do without any setup. Or have a packet trick in your pocket. Most packet tricks come in those little card wallets. So you can stick, and there's usually it's usually double-sided, so you can stick one on the left side, one on the right side. And you could pull out a packet trick and do that if you wanted, uh, which I think is... That you do that as well, but I I normally do a, a a more setup trick, and I'll set the trick up before I do it. Like if I go to a restaurant with like friends or something, and they know I'm a magician, they, everyone who knows me knows I'm a magician, so they'll ask to see a trick. I'll do one that has a long setup, have it already set up, and then I'll go into something like Chris Ballinger's forced outcome or some kind of ambitious card routine that requires no setup. So I recommend that. But if you have to have something set up. You know, you could have multiple decks in your pocket, or, or, or you know, or whatever. Um, my bag. I don't. I usually take a bag with me. I don't. I don't see it. I think it might be. Oh, here it is, right here. Let me grab the bag. I normally take this with me when I go to like restaurants and stuff. It's a little bag I got from a magic kit when I was like, uh, when I think when I was like fourteen or something like that. And it's a really cool bag because it holds a lot. And I put like all my tricks inside here when I go to restaurants. So this one I can just sling it over the shoulder. And then I'll just put this down and have multiple tricks in here. So you can also have multiple decks of cards set up and ready to go with different tricks. All right. Hope that helps. Now, Caleb Casper says, hey, what is that ace of spades thing behind you? And why do you have giant crowns? All right. Start with the ace of spades thing. This is the Ace of Spades thing he's talking about. Let me try to get it out without knocking everything over. All right, perfect. This Ace of Spades thing. I've done this for the 365-day Magic Challenge, so go back and take a look at this. This is no longer being made, so it is a discontinued product. But basically what it is, it's sort of like an invisible deck routine where the spectator chooses one of the aces, and inside there's a deck of cards, and whatever ace they choose is uh, the face-up ace, but also it's a different colored deck. So it's kind of like the Brainwave deck mixed with an invisible card routine. Uh, basically, it's just a nice little handmade box. And actually, when these were available, they were they went for like 80 or 90 bucks. I actually picked this up on sale for like 20 so I got a steal on that one. And why do I have giant crowns? All right, the giant crowns, like you see here, I've got one down here. These are for the confusing crown routine. I've done this for the 365-day magic challenge as well, so go look that up. What this is, though, is sort of like the passe passe bottles where uh, you start off with both crowns facing up, you turn your crown over, but when you lift it up, it's still this way. And the other, and the spectator's crown will be lifted up. So it uses a red and a yellow crown. And then there's also a little baby red crown you can buy, or the blue crown to have a different ending. So you could say, oh, well, the trick isn't working because, boom, and you lift up and there's a little itty-bitty baby red crown. Or you can uh, swap out crowns and say, well, the trick's not working because mine's actually a different color. So that's what that's for. So go look that up on my channel, Confusing Crowns. And um, the Box of Destiny is what this one's called. So go check those two out on my channel. Uh, Caleb Casper also says, what do you think of nothing but the truth? And... Do you know why mad sponges are so expensive? Okay, um, nothing but the truth. I'm definitely going to buy that in my next Magic Geek order. Uh, because you keep asking me about it. You keep telling me about it. And I've already, wa I've already want to buy it. I've already made up my mind that, you know, when, it, when I first saw the Magic Geek demo, and I was like, I got to get this. But you keep saying it's a really good trick, so I'm definitely going to have to check it out. And, and next month, when I place my next Magic Geek order, I'm definitely going to buy that one. Uh, mad sponges are so expensive. My favorite trick is mad sponges. Let me grab one of the little sponges here. These are so expensive because they are Goshman sponge balls, and Chris Ballinger hand carved and hand made these. So he hand painted everything, and he also carved out like the little ears and painted the ears, and like on the birds, he actually put the uh, the little feathers on the top of the birds. So, and he hand carves, hand paints them. That's why they're so expensive. And this is about like a $15 trick right here, the little color-changing uh, bomb. So they're really expensive because Chris Ballinger handmade all of them. 
And Kleb also wants to know, how do you get your magic trick so fast? Okay, um, well, the eBay trick, like the Tenyo Trisector, the guy I bought this from was right in Baltimore, Maryland. So it was like, you know, an hour up the road. So, you know, it got to me in only a day. Magic Geek Tricks, they have really good shipping. That's one of the reasons why I order from them a lot is because I usually get, uh, they'll ship the order like out on like Monday, we'll say. I'll get it by Wednesday. There, you, it usually takes them two days, and I pay for the standard shipping, not the express shipping or the overnight shipping. I'll pay for the standard. So it gets here really fast. So order for Magic Geek. You'll get your tricks really fast. And uh, Collab also says, sorry, but one more question. What should I put on my Magic Shelf, like besides Magic Tricks, just to fill it up? Okay. Um, I thought about your question because I obviously, if you haven't checked out Caleb's channel, he's trying to do something like these shelves behind me where he's putting magic up. Um, if you don't want to fill it with all magic, uh, one of my YouTube friends, Brendan Shepard, has put up WWE stuff. He's a big WWE wrestler fan, so he's put up one shelf will be uh, magic, the next shelf is WWE wrestlers. So what I would say to you is if you're not going to do a whole magic shop, set or, you know, collection of magic like this, what I would recommend is putting up stuff that represents you. So let's say you're into baseball, put up some baseball cards or put up a baseball. If you're into, um, if you're into soccer, maybe put up some, a soccer net or something. If you're into computers, put up a, you know, put up like a mouse, hang a mouse off of your shelf or something like that. If you're into, if you really love animals, then put up a picture of animals. Just, I would say, put stuff that interests you. So, if I wasn't doing this for my magic business, one of the reasons is I put this up uh, for my magic business as well. But if I was just doing this strictly for YouTube, I would put magic on maybe like one shelf, and over here I'd put game show stuff, because my tagline is game shows, magic, and more. So that's what I would do if I was doing this for strictly YouTube. But I also use this for my magic business as well. Uh, my magician business. So I don't want to say I have a magic shop, because I don't have one yet. So put stuff that represents you. All right, and Jay Brothwick has a final question. Hey, I'm sorry, mate. I have been so busy with Trickster. Hope you are well, though. I'm so excited. If you haven't checked out Jay Brothwick's tri trick, oh, I almost said it again. I just said it again. Twixter. You know, all the people put smiley faces, and a lot of people put, like, random thanks for me to say in the comments. I never mess it up, but, Jay, I can't say your name, Trickster. I always want to say Twixter. It's Twix for kids, I tell you. Silly rabbit, Twix are for kids. Um, anyways, so I can't wait to see your new series of Trickster. And go check out Series 1 on Jay Brothwick's channel if you haven't yet. All right, uh, so he wants to know, what do you think of Thought Bubbles by... Uh, I'm just going to say Tim. I'm not going to try to pronounce any of these names because I'm going to mess it up. Okay, Thought Bubbles, first of all, when I looked at it, they're just... It's exactly what the name is. They are Thought Bubbles. And you can have these thought bubbles, and you can customize, they're basically, uh, they're like little laundry basket kind of deals where they can fold up really small and like fit in your pocket. But you pull it out, and it's a giant thought bubble. And you can put anything you want on these thought bubbles. You could say, I'm on Facebook, as the demo, as the trailer says, I'm on Facebook. And it has the Facebook name on the back side of it. And it's like a thought bubble. You could say, um, like, uh, there was a clown that used the, the thought bubble trick and had... I feel pretty over the person's head. Uh, you could have a prediction on the thought bubble, like a three of hearts. Like, think of your card. Boom, three of hearts. I mean, so you could, I mean, that. I really think the thought bubble trick is kind of neat. And looking at it, I kind of want to get it, actually, because I think it looks really cool. Uh, because it's um, something that would be kind of interesting to add in a show. Because when you say, think of a card, you could say, I'm going to see if the audience can pick up on your thought, and boom. Uh, when I did my street magic video for one of the Magic Mondays uh, a couple of weeks ago, I do a trick where I say, think of your card, and the spectator faces the audience, and I hold a big uh, silk handkerchief over the person's head, and it has the picture of the card on it. And then I say, okay, what is the card? The audience shouts it out, and the person who's thinking of the card doesn't know what's going on behind them. And the thought bubble would be a really neat way to do that. I would like that. Um, the next question Jay has is, uh, he wants to know about Paul Harris Presents Luber's Gift by LeVar Fiddler. I probably screwed up the name, but this is a really interesting trick. I don't like it. I would never get it. 
The reason why is because there is a trick like it. It's down here in my case. But it's in and out boxes. In and out boxes, you have a red box and a black one. The black one fits inside the red one. You take the black one out, open the black one up, and the red one fits inside the black one. I have done that a couple times in some of my close-up shows. It doesn't get a reaction. People are like, I'm lost. What just happened here? It, it, it doesn't give them a wow factor. This trick is $100, and you're presenting the same effect where uh, a, a box fits inside of another one, and then you take the box out, and you put and you reverse it, and then the other box fits in. People, when I perform the in-and-out boxes, look at me, and they're like, I, I don't understand what this trick's about. This would be the same way. So if you want to perform the same trick, get in and out boxes. They are like $9.99 at Magic Geek, and it's the same trick, just a smaller version. I don't like it, but if you think you can make it work, maybe. I don't know. And Jay also wants to know about Splash Bottle 2.0 by Dave St uh, David Stone and Demirian Vetabuni. I'm sure I said that wrong. Uh, splash Bottle 2.0, if you don't know what a Splash Bottle is, basically you have a balloon, you blow it up, you pop the balloon, and when you pop the balloon, where the balloon was is now a bottle of wine. Um, it's a really fun trick. I don't own Splash Bottle. I don't own Splash Bottle 2.0. So I can't tell you what the difference is in Splash Bottles. I, I, I don't know what the difference is between 1 and 2, but it looks like a really cool trick. I don't do any alcohol in my show, so like I, except for the multiplying bottles, which are martinis. But uh, I don't use like wine bottles or beer bottles or anything like that. So I would never use it. But if you think it would be something for your show, it, I know I've seen magicians do it on stage before and it gets a really big reaction. So I kind of think it'd be good if you want to add that to your show, Jay. And he wants to know Bentley by Chris Hounois. Uh, what do you think of all these tricks? Thanks again, mate. Have a great week. Okay. Bentley is a paperclip trick. Where you take a paperclip, it's all it's in its original state, and it and in front of the spectator's eyes, it unbends. I don't to to me the trailer looks stupid. The trick looks stupid. The trick looked dumb, and I had a feeling it probably used invisible thread. That was my thinking on it. So I would never use the trick. I don't like using invisible thread. I don't like using magnets in my show either. I never like using magnets. So. If it's a magnet or invisible thread, that's going to turn me off. And to me, the trick looks stupid. Like, I'm just going to bend this paper clip. I mean, eh, I mean, I don't know. And I don't know if the um, trick is something you could, like, if you show the spectator the paper clip or you just bring it out of the pocket, do the trick, and put it away. If it's like that, spectators are going to say, well, that's a gimmick paper clip. They're going to say, there's something tricky about that paper clip. So, you know, I don't like it. If you can't if you can't have them examine the paper clip, I don't I, I wouldn't use it. But if you think you like it and you want to get it, I wouldn't, but you more than you you know, I would say go for it. If you think you could add it and work it into your show somehow. Thank you guys so much for watching Magician 101. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next Wednesday for an all new Magician 101. Do you know how to mix up cards? You say, you are not cards. You are not cards. You get the, the two tubes, and you get a certain amount of bottles. Let me grab one of the uh, real and usable. You're probably talking like a $100 trick, so that's why. And, and it's a real... Their selected card, we'll say, is the King of Diamonds goes right on the table. And all you